1981, when I was practicing at the bar, I took six months off as a sabbatical to go and teach at Warwick University. My clerk said, you'll never work again, so they'll forget who you are. But in fact, my practice survived. And while I was there, I started drafting a scheme for what we then I then envisaged as a law centre's law centre, a referral point for existing law centres, of which there were a good many in those days, 50-odd. Uh, what the Public Law Project has done in those years is not what I'd first envisaged. It's not been a referral point for other law centres. It's been a leader and an initiator of research and, uh, and of litigation. And that's been exactly what was needed. So I have no worries on that score at all. It's achieved far more than I think any of us visualised at the start. And uh, what it's doing and has done, I think, is absolutely admirable and indeed unmatched by anything that anybody else has done in this country. Over the last couple of years, PLP has done extremely important work in investigating the effects of the cuts in legal aid and the difficulty for people getting exceptional cases funding. Uh, they have uh, helped individuals in terrible circumstances, in family law cases, to get exceptional funding and they've exposed the uh, problems in the system where uh, the reality is that in the most extreme cases people have been denied the help that they need. Uh, PLP is a unique organisation. It helps individuals, it does vital research of the highest quality and it also campaigns on these critical issues. PLP now is on the front line in the war uh, that's being fought by this government against access to justice. It desperately needs your support. Around 2008-2009, we were confronted, that South for Black Sisters was confronted uh, by uh, loss of funding. Our local council had made a decision to cut our funding as a specialist provider of domestic violence services and instead to use that same pot of money to fund one generic service for the borough of Ealing. We had a gut instinct that this was unfair and possibly discriminatory and so I decided to seek advice from the Public Law Project because I was aware that that's why the Public Law Project is existed, to provide good quality advice to organisations like ours. The final outcome was um, a hearing at the High Court where Ealing Council's decision uh, was um, questioned um, on the basis that it was unfair, it was discriminatory, it, was dis it hadn't carried out a proper equality impact assessment and hadn't really taken into account the, the views of the users of our centre. Um, Ealing Council withdrew that decision, but we still asked the judge to provide some kind of a written guidance because we felt that our case was a very important case for other organisations to look at. And I thought I would concentrate on something that I think they have done brilliantly, which is their project on exceptional funding. When the government um, passed the Legal Aid Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act, LASPO, the Act ensured that lots of people would no longer get legal aid. That would be advice, it would be representation, and lots of areas of law were therefore taken away and hundreds of thousands of people would not get legal aid, who before the 1st of April 2013 did get legal aid. So what the Public Law Project did was set out a brilliant website explaining everything you need to know about the um, exceptional case funding application. And then they did more. They started off by sending off some applications on behalf of clients and they advised firms of solicitors, not-for-profit organisations like law centres, they advised people how to make an application and they realised how few were being granted. And subsequently we all found out how few were being granted and I've just checked the figures and in the first year 1,520 applications were made and 69 were granted. That's a very, very low um, success rate for something where the government said five to 7,000 applications would be made. So from the beginning, they realised this was a risk, that it was going to be very hard for people to get this funding, and therefore the risk was that people wouldn't be advised or represented. And when all else failed, they looked at litigation to 
try to ensure that there was some clarity and a, a wider interpretation of the legislation and regulations. Its research programme is one of the, its big success stories. The, the researchers not only look at the statistics, but they find out why things are happening, why cases seem to be started and then suddenly stop, or why they may get on quite a long way and then stop. And it is that kind of information which has been of huge value in uh, working out what is the best procedures for judicial review. But the two big programs, one was uh, near the start when it provided an in-depth study of what was happening in judicial review in those days, which was of great help when uh, the Law Commission was preparing for proposals for government. And more recently, when they looked at 1,500 piles in judicial review cases. And that was a, they provided a complete answer to the government's recent bad proposals for judicial review form, which relied on story, uh, stories and prejudices and anecdotes rather than hard evidence. If it, PLP didn't exist, somebody else would have to do its research program for it instead, and it would do it a lot, good deal less well. Public Law Project is a very important partner organization of ours, because like us, they prosecute and challenge the executive if there is any unfairness in law, they hold them to account. In this respect, last year, in 2014, they prosecuted a case commonly known to us as resident test case. The government wanted to introduce a rule depriving the people, those who are not here with more than 12 months residence, they, are not, they will be deprived of legal aid to prosecute their case. And as you know, it is impossible for people to prosecute cases without legal aid, particularly the migrants and refugees. The court, thankfully, divisional court found uh, in uh, favor of public law project, rightly so. Everyone is equal in the eyes of laws. And that's why it's benefited, that case benefited many migrants to any unfairness, uh, unfair uh, decisions against them or their families, they could prosecute that case and get legal aid to prosecute. And that's why Public Law Project case, this is just an example, they have done many such cases. That's why this organization is very important to us.